do not be afraid for the father to show you his level of provisional power. Don't be afraid of the money power of God because this is how the Lord is going to give you the advantage in a lot of things that's pertaining to your life. He places that money mantle on you so that you could experience degrees of his presence, degrees of his authority, degrees of his love, degrees of his, his prosperity, degrees of his personality. Prosperity is God's personality. If you notice what uh, third John said, John, the apostle got a revelation. I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. See, Apostle John got the revelation because he was spending time with the father that the father wanted you to get to know this prosperity personality that he carried where he bypasses all of your dreams and your desires and he satisfies you. Psalm 103 say he gonna satisfy your mouth with good things. Psalm 81 verse 10 say, open your mouth wide and I'll fill it. Matthew chapter seven, verse 11. King Jesus said, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more would the father give good gifts to those that ask him? Matthew chapter seven, verse 11. The text was to signify how the father, he's in a mentality of willingness and generosity towards you. You're not trying to convince God to give you riches or money or wealth or take care of you. That has been his desire before you was born. That's why he sent you to the earth for you to see his glory, for you to let others see his glory through you. Glory and gold are not divorced. They're in covenant together. So when the glory of God was moving with Moses, you see this wealth transference happen where Pharaoh and the Egyptians, that money now gets into the children of Israel's hands. Why? Because wealth is in, and gold and, 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 and glory, they move together. So when someone is in the glory realm of God, he wants you to see his provisional power. He wants you to see his provisional ability. See, when King Jesus was taking Peter out to fish and Peter said, I, I have done this all night. And Jesus said, still let down your net. What Jesus was showing Peter the difference. World system, you system, my system. My God, my God, glory to God, glory to God. What King Jesus was doing was, I'm gonna show you the difference. We have your system, Babylonian system, that's one and the same. Your system and Babylonian system because the Babylonian system was built out of man trying to be their own God. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So the Babylonian system and, and man's system are not separate. Man made that system because they had alienated themselves from God's provisional power, God's provisional system. So they went in their own way, their own manner, their own intellect, their own understanding. And the Babylonian system was a financial wisdom that came from the serpent. Saints, you ever wonder how people in the world get real rich and then something happened to them? They either die, they end up with life in jail or something weird happened to them. They get killed or something. And you're like, they had all that money. That's what Satan does. Satan betrays people that live in the Babylonian system. So even, even when people get rich in the Babylonian system, just watch them. Watch what happened. It's sorrow. At one point, Satan betrays them. The Babylonian system was where man, they, 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 they rebelled against God and then they said, I'm going to still find a way to look like I'm blessed. I'm going to find a way to still look like I am prosperous. I'm going to find a way to look like I am successful. I'm educated. That's what the Babylonian system is. 
So saints, you got to understand Babylonian system came from Babel system. Babel is where you talk words and you just talking out of pride, arrogance, vain imagination, vain glory. And you just talking and talking and talking. You babbling. That's why God changed their language. He changed their language. The word of God said that he changed their language in Genesis and they had a different language. They couldn't talk to each other. So the Babylonian system was built out of people that was talking as if they had dominion and God, his presence wasn't backing them. So saints, I want you to catch this. That's why when you get back into the kingdom system, you could talk with dominion and God is with you. Ha! He backing you. Because now, we, this not Babylonian. This, this not Babylon. This is blessing. This is God Almighty, God moving in your flesh. Holy Ghost power living on the inside of you, talking through you. So there's a difference now. If you look at it, they was babbling. They was talking like they had dominion. God wasn't with them. When you step into the kingdom system, you talk with dominion and the power of God backs you. You say money cometh, the power of God backs you. You say I'll never be broke, the power of God backs you. You say I'm walking in prosperity, the power of God backs you. You say I'll never have another day of, of hunger and poverty and destruction and famine, the power of God backs you. You say let there be money in my life, the power of God backs you. You say let myself be a millionaire in Jesus' name, let there be millions of dollars in my life, the power of God backs you. You say let the blessing of Abraham manifest upon me, let the blessing of Abraham manifest in my pathway, in my finances, in my body, in my mind, the power of God backs you. When you say let there be light in my money, let there be light in my body. Body. Let there be light in my mind. Let there be light in my emotions. Let there be light in my life. The power of God backs you. See, you are not just babbling. You are speaking as an oracle of God, decreeing and declaring, moving with the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith, therefore I spoke. That's what the word of God say. The spirit of faith make you a speaker of God's words. Saints, um, I want to teach you something mighty about decreeing. Copy the format of God with decrees for now on. Let there be harvests in my life. That let there be decreeing anointing. Grazo vole nevenisiana. Hala gravaso crovosco rovenisiana. Calo grere nerienos. Start moving in that let there be. Declaration grace. So, so, so let there be health in my body. Let, let, that's how we talk, man. And it works. Let there be joy in my heart. Let there be focus. Let there be productivity. Let there be loyalty to God's will in my soul. Let there be the fear of the Lord. Let there be the knowledge of God inside of me. Let there be supernatural angels moving around my life today, protecting me, prospering me. Let the schedule of God manifest for me today. Let the will of God be done. Saints, we forgot something in the Lord's prayer or we missed something, but I'm going to reveal it to you. You notice what Jesus told them. He said in the Lord's prayer, he said, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. That's the let there be anointing. Grazo tole mensiae. Jesus took them back to Genesis chapter one and Genesis uh, chapter one, verse one and two. He took them back to the let there be declaration grace, because even, even in the Lord's prayer, he said, let your kingdom come. Let that word let let's let's talk about the power of the word let. The word let in the spirit realm is a word that ushers in. A presence. It ushers in an activity. It ushers in an occurrence. It ushers in a shift, a change, a difference. Let there be. When 
God said that to the earth realm. God was saying, I permit the harvest of light to govern the earth. I permit the harvest of light to govern this region. And since the light came, saints, think about this. God said, let there be light. A whole centuries of years ago, millions of years ago, let there be light. And look today. We still have light in the sun. We still have light, lesser light in the moon. We still have light in the stars. Light still exists from that one decree. When you step into God's clothing, God's clothing, when you let there be with your declarations, whatever you letting with your declaration, is going to continue, is going to remain, is going to keep on happening. Let there be is a prophetic announcement that a believer is supposed to walk with in every situation. Let there be recovery. Let there be peace that surpasses all understanding, guarding my heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Let there be favor with God and with men in my life. Let there be with his stripes I am healed. Let there be health manifested forevermore in my body parts. Let there be the blood of Jesus guarding me and shielding me. Let the blood of Jesus purge my conscience from dead works. So saints, as, as we're looking at this here, you have to be bold with the money power of God. The money power of God is something that has been available in every generation, but many generations don't receive it. They don't walk in it. You have to be bold with it. The Lord is real aggressive when it comes to the money power of God, the money power of the Holy Ghost, because this will decide who can sponsor the kingdom on earth? Who could push his word going forth with excellency, with glory, with splendor, with the appropriate presentation? Saints, I don't want to be too graphic, but sometimes, you know, you ever see them churches that, that, uh, them, them, the broke churches that's always, they always put the little children out there talking about they doing car washes and stuff. Saints, when people use children to get you to sow into them, that's manipulation. That, that's, that's manipulation. Now, saints, not only the church world do that, people do that in neighborhoods. You ever, you ever seen neighborhood when people will put their child to bed? Even though they're not poor, if they want to have you fund something that they're doing, whether Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, they put their child in front of you. That's manipulative. You know I ain't lying. Saints, even if a preacher got to tell you, I feed the homeless, I feed the poor, why you got to manipulate me to sow into you? You ain't got no anointing? You... Say, let, 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 me, let me talk to you in here, man. Saints, Prophet Joshua Holmes carries an anointing of reaping. I'm a soul because I have positioned myself as a sower. The Holy Ghost gives you energy to sow. You don't need no manipulation. Why God going to have to manipulate you about something that's benefiting you? Manipulation is when you get tricked into something that's for your own harm. Talk to me in here. Talk to me in here. You ever heard somebody say, I've been manipulated and something worked out for their benefit? Now, people say I'm manipulated when they put their faith in something and it doesn't have any truth to it. The gospel ain't got to manipulate you. The gospel don't manipulate is a mantle.
It's not manipulation, it's multiplication. I heard the Holy Ghost just say that. Ain't that powerful? I just heard the Holy Ghost say it just like that. That's why I had to wait a little while. I heard the Holy Ghost just say, it's not manipulation. Tell my people, it's multiplication. The seed is not God taken from you. It's God training you to discern what he gave you. So that he could give you more and trust you with more. See, saints, you holding back your life if you don't recognize how to sow. Because God going to have you reaping so that you could go up higher in your sowing. So if you struggling now with discerning sowing, why God going to make you a reaper? Because you're going to steal at a higher level. God not trying to raise you up to be a Grand Theft Auto character. He raising you up to be a steward. He make you a ruler over much if you be faithful in your stewardship. Saints, you know the power of faithfulness. That means that the fullness of the word is able to live in you full time. Faithfulness means that the fullness of the word is your reality full time. There's no space in your life. See, saints, now you understand why people don't be faithful to God. Because the word get interrupted. Faithfulness has nothing to do with your prayer that you say you're going to be faithful. It has nothing to do with your vow. Because if you look at it, no, now you know why people make vows to God and don't keep it. They trying to keep it because they said it. You can only keep it because he said something that you are keeping in you that now it is giving you power to remain with what you said. What God says makes you loyal to what you say. If you forget what God says, you'll forget what you say. Think about that. Every time you don't do what you said you're going to do, it's because you stopped doing what God said to do. Man shall live by every word that proceed out of the mouth of man. No. Man shall live by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. So the whole lifestyle is governed. Its root system is God's words. So whenever someone is unfaithful to God, what's really happening? The words of God is interrupted. It's no longer a reality. Something else has taken the attention of the mind. Something else has taken the attention of the emotion. Something else has taken the attention of the soul. The person has reached the breach. The blood of Jesus is bleach for your breach. The blood of Jesus is bleach. For your breach. So it removes that stain of interruption. That every time where you pick your hand to go forth with the Lord, this thing pops up and hinders you. It removes the stain. Saints, all of us are wearing garments right now. If someone is in sin, their garments, some people's garments is shredded. Some people's garments got holes in it. Some people's garments are dirty, filthy, stained. Saints, if you was to look in the spirit realm, everybody is wearing garments right now. Every boy, every girl, every woman, every man, everybody is wearing garments right now. And it's not just skin color. And saints, some people's garments are very filthy right now. Some people's garments are are, 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 are stained. Some people's garments are white. Now, saints, why would someone's garments be white? Because they're communicating with God and God is communicating with them. And there's a perfect harmony with God and them in the communication. What do you mean? Are you talking about prayer? I'm talking about the communication system of actions, the communication system of words, the communication system of thoughts, the communication system of how you treat people, the communication system of your perspective, your opinion, your focus, your expectation. When someone has white garments, it's because their communication to God is not fear, worry, stress, anxiety, betrayal, laziness, slothfulness, unmercifulness. 
distraction, weakness, infirmity, uh, iniquity. That's not their, their reaction to God. Their reaction to God is faith, hope, and love. Faith, hope, and love. Faith, hope, and love. Remember, I believe it was the apostle that talked about now remain these three things, faith, hope, and love. That's their response to God. And when their response to God is in that notion, their garment is white. What happens when your response to God is love? Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. John 14, 15, John 15, 14. I believe that's what it is. John 15, 14 too. I think that's where it say that there. If you are my, you are my friends, if you do whatsoever, I command you. John 14, 15, I believe that's the, the one that I'm really trying to hit, I believe. Love, when it is you communicating love to God, you're communicating your obedience to what he commands you. And commands is where God aggressively requests something of you. He aggressively wants something from you. That's what it means to operate in what we call commands. Command is different from just an instruction because you could give someone an instruction politely. But when you are commanding, that means that you are doing it with great possession of the person. A command means I know that I own you. So do what I'm telling you to do. I don't want no questions. I don't want no investigation. Don't try to figure out what's going to happen. Just do what I'm saying. That's a command. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So keep what I aggressively tell you is right. Don't try to find a way out of it. Don't delay it. Don't be stubborn in what you knew before, but adapt to this. So when you communicate love is adaptation to God's mentality. If you think about it, God commands you out of his intellect. That means that his mind has thought about this and now it comes out of his mouth. Jesus said out of the, abundant, the, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So Jesus was talking about how your mouth talks because of what it thinks. So God himself, when he commands you, it was a part of his meditation. So when you obey the commandment, you are agreeing and celebrating God's thought life. Your obedience is a celebration of God's thought life. <laughs> What happens when you communicate hope? You are displaying confidence in God's words. You are saying that you trust his words. Hope is you saying, Lord, you're not a liar. You're not a trickster. You're not a con man. You're not a fraud. You're not a deceiver. Hope, it impresses God. Hope arouses God. Hope gives you access to the muscles of God. He shows you what he can lift up, including you. Remember, it said that promotion doesn't come from these different directions, the south, the north, the, the east, the west. It said promotion coming from the Lord. It said, humble yourself underneath the mighty hand of God and he'll lift you up. In James chapter four, I believe that's verse nine and 10 and 11. If you think about it, what's really going on when God is promoting you? He's lifting you up. And so hope accesses the muscles of God. You access his muscles and his muscles is the realm where he lifts up things, including you. So hope activates the harvest of promotion because you're telling God, I believe in your muscles. I believe in your mantles. And what does faith do? Faith is the crutches, is determining your walk, is determining your decisions. It determines your value of the word of God. Faith, if you think about it, faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God, I believe that's Romans chapter 10, verse 17. The word of God gives faith. So when faith is your communication to God, you're saying, Lord, I'll, I'll become a student of your word. I'll study your word. I'll abide by your word. Your word will motivate my emotions. 
Your word will motivate my viewpoint. Your word will motivate my atmosphere, my dwelling place mentally. Your word will motivate my submission, my humility, my fear of God, my peacemaking abilities, my joy, my servanthood, my kindness, my generosity, my patience, my focus, my continuance, my diligence, my perseverance. Your word will motivate my work ethic. Your word will motivate my honor. Your word will motivate my forgiveness of others, my mercy towards others. When your communication towards God is in faith, hope, and love, your garment is white in the spirit. I'm teaching you some priceless things on here. I'm teaching you some priceless things on here. When your garment is white, it's because faith, hope, and love is being demonstrated, is being communicated with your communication system towards God. The life of riches, it is the after effect of the life of righteousness. God tests your agreement before he gives you wealth. God tests your agreement before he gives you wealth. God tests your agreement before he gives you wealth. What's the main quality that the Lord looks for before he makes someone rich? Agreement. 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 Abraham was so rich because of his agreement. I don't care what nobody say. It was the will of God for Abraham to say that was his sister. God was testing his agreement. Somebody could challenge that and be like, oh, no, 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 that's not scriptural. He lied. Well, why didn't God rebuke him for the lie? Why did God make him a multimillionaire? Because he lied. Does that sound correct? In the same Old Testament in Deuteronomy 28, where it said that these blessings shall overtake him that obey my voice. Does that sound correct for Abraham to disobey God's voice? And God causes the man in which he spoke the lie to, to make him rich. Does that sound correct for God to appear in the dream and say, this is my prophet? A prophet means that this is my mouthpiece. This is the person that speaks what I tell them to say. Ah! So think about it. Why would God appear in the man's sleep and say, this is my prophet? When prophet means... I translate what I want this person to say and they say it. Why would God declare that to a liar or, or, or declare that about a liar? Does that make sense? Abraham just told a lie and God said, this my prophet. Abimelech could easily look. Was, it, was that his name? Abimelech or, or Abuja or Muhammad? What? Would God look and say, you know, this is my prophet. Would that look correct? Also, you told him to say something that was incorrect. Yeah. Abraham was a man of agreement. He agreed with God to the degree that God told him, take your son up on the mountain. And he's about to kill and slice his son wide open because he agrees with God. Look at the main quality of Abraham. He's a man of agreement. Look at the main quality of Solomon. Agreement with God. God tells him, this prostitute is lying. This harlot is lying. That's not her son. This son belonged to this one. And Solomon says, I'm going to cut this child in half. And he looks at the one that is the mother. Say, no, don't cut the child in half. The other one that wasn't the mother. Say, cut, cut him in half. Solomon agreed with God. Solomon got to where he was because of agreement. He sold thousand burnt offerings because it was an act of agreement. He went up on the mountain a thousand different times to offer up an animal to God, to offer up his possessions to God, to offer up his finances to God. Because he's in agreement. Agreement is the major quality that God looks for. For money cometh to work in your life. Agreement. 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 Jesus told Peter he'll give him a hundredfold. He told the disciples he'll give him a hundredfold. On the basis of their agreement. He said, if you could agree with me to leave wife, agree with me to leave children, agree with me to leave whatever sacrifice I will call of you. If you could agree with me, you'll have a hundredfold in this life and in the life to come. 
If you look at your path, to, path today, what is God doing with you? You want to know what's happening in your life? You know what's happening? You, oh, why is this happening to me, prophet? What's going on with me? What's going to happen to me? Am I going to die? Am I going to live? You got to ask yourself that question. When we belong to Jesus, there's no way to die. We don't die. I'll never die. We only got one verdict, live. We only got one verdict, life. Life is in my, the power of my tongue. We don't even consider death. Agreement solidifies the abundant life. Agreement. Agreement is the major thing. Why does God let you go through what you're going through? Why do you see different things moving in relationships? People leaving your life, people coming into your life, disconnection, reconnection, connection, divine connection, new connections. God is testing your agreement in everything. Jesus told Peter, watch and pray while he's in the garden of Gethsemane. He's looking for Peter's agreement. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. The apostle John is able to write about prosperity being God's major wish. He wished above all things that you prosper because of agreement. He couldn't preach that to the church if he didn't agree with God. If he disagreed with God, he said, no, we, we don't need this prosperity stuff, this prosperity gospel. But he said, no, God's major wish is that you prosper. Agreement. And that's why he was called the disciple that Jesus loved. Agreement was his major weapon. King Ahasuerus tells Vashti, come show yourself. She says, no. King Ahasuerus goes and finds a woman that will submit himself with agreement. He doesn't pick Esther because she's the sexiest, according to her physicality. He picks Esther because she is the most potent display of agreement. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, mm, Agreement. The Queen of Sheba takes a trip from Sheba all the way to travel to go see Solomon and sows the most money ever. Did she sow the most money because he was the most handsome man? Because he was the most beautiful man? She sows the best seed because she's in agreement. Agreement releases your sowing grace. Agreement it puts you in position for reaping harvests because you got to agree with God that he's the Lord of the harvest and it's God that gives the increase. Apostle Paul taught that it's God that giveth the increase because Apostle Paul believed he was in agreement. Apostle Paul said, if you sow bountifully, you reap bountifully because Apostle Paul was able to teach that because of his agreement with God. The reason why they came in Acts chapter 4, verse 34 on to 35, 36, 37. Think about it. The church came and laid down their money at the apostles' feet. Was it because the apostles told them, you better do this or I'm going to shoot you? They did it because they were in agreement. And agreement finds methods of worship. Agreement finds methods of worship. Agreement finds methods of worship. Agreement gives you creativity of how to distinguish your adoration of God. Agreement makes you distinguish your approach to God. You're coming a way that many don't even know how. Agreement activates creativity. Agreement creates bountiful sowing. It causes you to give, to be the best to be the top. Saints, when you're in agreement with God, there's no competition with anybody. You don't have to look at the next woman, the next man and say, oh, I need, I'm intimidated by them. No, no. Agreement sets you in your own category. When you're in agreement with God, there's no insecurity. There's no backsliding. 
There's no returning to your former life of sin. Agreement destroys witchcraft. If you learn agreement, you'll never have another day of wasting your time, even with people that's not even a part of your life. Why do people miss dead people? Why do people miss people that don't even have a body on earth no more? Why? Because they're not in agreement with God. You ever thought about that? You ever hear somebody say, oh, I miss my cousin and God moved the cousin out their life. They're not in agreement. When you're not in agreement, you become a witch. You become a witch towards God, even in his decisions. You don't even agree with his decisions. Remember, what was Jesus pleading with Lazarus' sisters about? Jesus said, didn't I tell you if you believe me, you'll see the glory of God? He's saying, why won't you agree with me? All these words that's coming out of your mouth is stupid because you won't agree with me. All these thoughts that you're dwelling on are stupid because you won't agree with me. How much time are you wasting because you don't agree with God? Once you come into agreement, you'll become rich. Once you come into agreement, you'll become healed. Once you come into agreement, you'll become free. You'll become peaceful. You won't sneak no more. You'll walk in boldness, confidence. The Bible says in 1 John that when we shall see him, we won't be afraid of him. Because as he is, so are we in this world. I think that's 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. But I'm also talking about 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 and on. It's talking about when Jesus shows up. In this, in this rapture, you won't be afraid for him to take you up. You won't be ashamed. In Revelation, the word of God said that the whole earth was mourning at his coming. It was saying that the whole earth was afraid of him. They had no agreement with him. When you don't agree with him, you're ashamed of him. You're not ready to stand. You're not ready to show yourself bold. But when you're in agreement with him, you have confidence. You can rest. That's why in Hebrews, it says there remaineth a rest for the people of God. I think that's Hebrews chapter four. That rest, that rest comes with agreement. A sower is a spokesman of agreement. A reaper are evidential witnesses of agreement. A sower and a reaper are both indicating that God's kingdom reigns above all. This is the lifestyle that we live when we're in agreement with God. We honor him and he honors us. We honor him more, he honors us more. We honor him higher, he honors us higher. Once you realize that God is not a one-sided relationship, he's not just having you do what he says. God does what you say. Listen to what I'm telling you. Psalm 37 verse four says that if you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. 